Pete Madsen here for Acoustic Guitar Magazine and I'm here to talk to you about beginning blues soloing. If you've ever listened to the playing of Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Dan Auerbach, or any other host of blues inspired players, you've wondered how do they do it? How do they play those solos? So today I want to talk to you about how to start out your blues soloing. We'll talk about two different aspects of it. The technical aspect, which is learning some scales, in this, uh, in this case, A minor pentatonic scales, some licks and some riffs, ideas based on the scales. But then I also want to talk to you about how to create a conversational quality to your soloing. If you think about your speech, how you talk to people, and having a dialogue with another person, if you use that as a template for soloing, you'll create a lot of interest and people will listen to you more than if you were just to play a bunch of uh, riffs and licks fast and speedy all over the neck. So the, if you think about uh, like a typical phrase, you, you say something, then you pause or someone responds back to something you say. So think about those ideas as we go through the different licks and riffs and ideas on the guitar fretboard. To start off with, we're going to play uh, some blues in the key of A. And I'm thinking about as a background rhythm, you have something along the lines of... It's kind of your typical A blues shuffle. Now over that, we can learn these pentatonic scales. And these are minor pentatonic scales. And what pentatonic means is five. So there are five notes in these scales. And each scale pattern that I give you, it will start on a different note of the scale. Let me play one of the scales and I'll explain a little bit more. Our first pattern begins at the fifth fret on the sixth string. Now you say, hey, there were more than five notes. Actually, there weren't. One, two, three, four, five and then I start over again. So the five notes of the scale, A, C, D, E, G, and then I start over again. A, C, D, E, G, and back to A. So these are called two octave scale patterns. That's the first pattern. The next pattern begins on the second note of the previous scale. So my second pattern uh, in your um, written uh, materials that's called pattern B. Okay, so that was the sec started on the second note of the previous pattern. The next pattern will begin on the second note of the pattern I just played. This is pattern C. Okay. As you might notice, I'm starting to run out of room here on my guitar, so my pattern D, which will start on this note, the E note, I'm going to play down here, an octave lower. So pattern D and back. Finally, the fifth pattern, pattern E. You might have noticed the second note of that scale brings me right back to where I started with pattern A. So now we've navigated the entire guitar neck. And you're saying to yourself, probably, that's a lot of stuff. I can't memorize all that. Well, uh, one tip I have for you is learn one position or one pattern a day or a week, whatever, how many times you use. So learn one or two patterns, then memorize and do more patterns as you go along. Now, for soloing purposes, I'm going to say, let's just isolate one small part of uh, one of the patterns. In the case of the exercises for exercise uh, two, I'm going to play part of the second pattern. 
just these four notes between the eighth and the tenth fret. That's uh, G, A, C, and D. So if I break it down to just a small chunk like that, I don't have to think about as much and I don't have to navigate as much of the guitar neck. Now what I can do with those notes is I can affect them. I can pick them or I can slide between them. I can uh, hammer on. I can pull off. And that's all from example two.